Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping here. And today I'm going to be bringing you another Platinum gameplay using the Asari Infiltrator. Or the Asari Huntress. I decided to do a gameplay with her because I was talking a little bit about this, I think, in my last commentary. How I needed some ideas. And I said people could recommend ideas to me. But I decided that I was going to go ahead and go on my Facebook and do a poll and see did anyone want to vote on that. So if you guys want to be a part of any other polls, because I probably will start doing that a little bit here and there for maybe platinum gameplays and all that. Go to my Facebook. It's in the description. Go give me a like. I would really appreciate that. And then I might be posting different polls. So basically, what I was asking in the poll was, what did you guys want to see the next Platinum gameplay of? And I and I selected a couple choices that I thought were, would be good, and basically I let people vote on it. And that's what I'll probably end up doing. Like, there's no point to tell me or, or try to, like, say something. Like, oh, I want to see this. If it's not a part of the poll, it ain't going to be done. But, like I said, in the future I will include it for other polls, things like that. So, go on my Facebook, like I said, like it, and then if you see one of these polls, definitely vote on it. I would appreciate that. But anyway, I was really happy that she won because I really wanted to do another gameplay with her, and I really wanted to talk about her more because she has changed quite a bit since the last time I did her commentary. She was uh, glitched, and she still is glitched. Her weapon damage does not work. But it's not really a big deal because she is extremely useful, especially for using like a biotic team, like we are. I really do think that if you want Dark Channel to be a part of your power synergy for doing explosions and whatnot, then she is the best choice for Dark Channel. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about this. Now, the build for her has changed, most definitely. If you want the build, you can look at the description, it will be in there. But I wanted to talk a little bit about some of my choices for my build on her because uh, I'm sure a couple of people are going to have some questions. For her cloak, I only go to rank 5. And you might be wondering, for one, why do I only go to rank 5? Why do I not go to rank 6 for the power damage? I personally do not feel that it's all that necessary to get the power damage bonus. The reason why is because I personally like to use her more of a weapons build than anything else. Now, of course, like I said before, you can use her as powers, you can do explosions, but she definitely shines a lot better if you can have teammates that can detonate your explosions than you yourself detonating your own explosions. It's possible, but it's not as easy and it's not as fast paced as if you had some teammates to do it. And you really can play the entire game with her and not get one explosion at all and still do really well with the weapon. So that is something I really like about her. So that's the main reason why I only go for five ranks into Cloak. Now you also might be wondering, wait a minute, why do I go for melee damage? That does sound interesting. Hmm. There's a couple reasons why I like melee damage. I think that it's very important. Now if you personally don't feel like you want to do that, you can always go four ranks into fitness instead. So keep that in mind. It's really up to you. But I'll explain why the melee damage is really nice. The reason why I really like it is because if you play gold or you play against Cerberus ever and there's a phantom, you can melee her. And her melee is a, so powerful. Like, her melee build in general is really fun because she can pretty much one hit almost every enemy. Although her weapon damage and cloak is glitched, her melee damage is not. So I believe with what I have, it's a 170% bonus to melee. <laughs> that is insane. So if you cloak and melee a phantom, you will pretty much all but kill that phantom on gold. And if you dark channel her first, before you melee her, she'll, well, die from that. So it is a very useful phantom killing tool to actually use her melee. So keep that in mind. That's what I highly recommend to try, especially if you like to play gold, or if you're going to play gold or and you're going to go against Cerberus ever, it is really useful. And of course, you can always do it to other enemies too, like the Hunters and Pyros and whatever. But in general, yeah, I like to leave that at 5. Warp, I max that out the normal way. Dark Channel, I max that out the normal way. 
I go for weapons damage, I go for power damage, and I go for weapons damage. Like I said, it's more of a actual weapons build. Although I don't go for headshots, I still think the power damage is nice. And for fitness, I put the three points in, into fitness. Of course, like I said, if you want to put the four points into there, you can just obviously skip the melee damage and cloak. That's something you can do. But anyway, so that's the build in the nutshell. I really like it. I think it's pretty effective. And, like I said, the way that I like to play with her is more, if I'm playing by myself, for example, because a lot of times, you know, you'll play with Alliance Infiltration Units, or you'll play with Geth Troopers. You won't play with other Biotics. And if you are going to try to play her, that's fine, actually, because you're, you're just going to have to shoot a lot. There's a lot of things you can do with her. She actually is very versatile. The first thing is, is that if you use Warp Rounds 4, that is amazing. Now, one thing I did recently learn... Because, although I'm not a big fan of the Bioware social network, I don't ever get on there. A lot of my subscribers and a lot of you guys are. So, I tend to base a lot of the stuff that I learn from people through comments and, and people I know who actually play the game a lot and they know a lot or they stay on the Bioware social network a lot. I mean, the social network is good for that. Like, if you sit on there all day reading forums, you probably would learn a lot about the game that people have discovered. Where I don't have the time for that, and I don't like the, I don't like forms. I'm not a big fan of them, but that's just me. But anyway, one thing I did learn from my video, I asked a question. I said, "What the hell does Warp Rounds Four actually do?" I was curious, and someone answered me. And basically, what they do is this: the first thing is obviously Warp Rounds Four. They give you 65% more weapons damage, which is good. That's amazing. They weaken armor. And they make it so biotic explosions do 100% more damage. The powers. Not the explosions. Not the explosions. Just the powers. So basically, like, if you prime, if you shoot them with warp rounds and then you shockwave them, your shockwave or your nova or your charge will do 100% more damage of the base. Basically, though, another thing that someone was saying, which... I didn't know how to take this, I didn't know was this true or not, but I kind of believe it because I started playing around with it a little bit, especially on this Asari Huntress, and I can honestly say I do think this is true, which is, if you use Warp Rounds 4 and you prime the target, but you do not actually blow them up, then your weapon will get 100% more weapons damage. So for example, with the Claymore here, if I was to warp a target, not blow it up, and then shoot it, my Claymore will do 3,200 damage. Because the Claymore does 1,600 damage if all the pellets hit. And double that is 3,200. Plus, you gotta count the cloak. You gotta, well, the cloak, the weapon damage is glitched, but I think that she does get 40% weapons damage. I'm not too sure. I think that's how it works. But yeah, so you gotta count all the passives, the, the, the equipment, all that gets counted in there, and then yeah, you get this ginormous amount. So Warp Rounds 4 are really amazing if you're running around priming targets but not actually killing the targets or exploding the targets. That's really what you want to avoid. <laughs> like, that's awesome, right? So, like, that's what I do with her a lot, is I use Warp Rounds 4 to do that. So if I'm playing by myself, I don't have anybody to back me up and detonate explosions for me. I'll just dark channel and warp things and I'll shoot them. And it works extremely well, especially with a gun like the Claymore. And obviously you can use any gun you want. I really like the Claymore on her. I think it's really good. Because there's another trick you can do. Besides the Warp Browns 4 trick I just told you about, you can also do an incendiary ammo glitch. Which, what that is, is... If you are using, I think it actually works like this. I don't think it's just the ammo. I think it's anything that does damage over time. If you debuff the target first with something like Warp, which debuffs them 15%, Snap Freeze, Proxy Mine. I believe it works for things like Proxy Mine as well. As long as it's a debuff that is based on a number, if you debuff that target and then you apply the incendiary ammo effect, it goes crazy. I mean, I believe it's with all damage over time, but I know for a fact with incinerary ammo, you can definitely see a difference. Incinerary ammo 4 is supposed to do 50 points of fire damage 
over three seconds. I believe it's 50 points of fire damage per second for three seconds. So it's like 150 damage, which really isn't nothing. That is not that much damage at all. But if you debuff that target first with like warp, you're talking, it, it goes crazy. I, I can't even explain how much it is, but it goes really crazy. And they start to take a lot more damage. Like a brute, for example, will lose like three bars of armor just from the ammo. Which is really crazy because brutes have like 17,000 or 16,000 armor on platinum. And I'm talking about platinum here. Like I can take down three bars of armor from a, from a brute just from doing that trick. So, it is very nice. So that's something else you can do. That's the reason why I'm actually using incinerary ammo in this in this gameplay. Besides the fact that you can always get the fire explosions as well, which is a very good combination with doing something like biotic explosions. I actually really do love doing that. Because if you shoot them and then they're set up for a fire... Let's say you warp and then you shoot. They're probably going to be set up for the fire explosions. So if someone, let's say, shockwaves then they'll blow up the fire explosion for you. But then if they shockwave again, or if someone else hits with another power that can detonate, you'll get the biotic explosion. So you'll get two explosions pretty quickly, and it's really, really good. And on top of that, you can do a lot of damage. I'm talking about thousands and thousands of points of damage, potentially, with your ammo. So that is another trick to know. So that's something else you can do with her that's really effective. Just use the claymore. I think the claymore is one of the best weapons for applying the fire ammo effect. So just use the claymore, and you just hit them with you sh you you hit them with warp. You shoot them, and you get this effect, and it's really really amazing. Anyway, though, uh, yeah, she's really good. Now, one thing I should say: this is a flawless gameplay, meaning that I do not die, and I can't remember a game where I didn't die in platinum. Maybe as a Krogan. I played a couple games actually as a Krogan Vanguard, I think, and I haven't died. And of course, if you play Juggernaut, that that does not count. <laughs> like you can't count a game of like Platinum playing a Juggernaut and not dying. I, I I'll laugh at that. But anyway, yeah. So I don't die in this game, and that was I was actually really happy about that because I was playing a little bit with her, trying to get a, a good gameplay. I wanted to get a gameplay where I didn't die, and this was the gameplay I got that I didn't actually die in. So it's really good. Now, Reactor, I've done this map for Platinum before, as of recently with, the, I believe it was, the Cory Male Engineer, showing him off. And I really, I really like Reactor, and I know a lot of people really don't like this map. I don't know why, like, it's, it's a pretty good map. If you are playing with some friends, this is one of the, in my opinion at least, this is one of the easiest maps in the game to actually stay together on. Because you can easily just run through the Reactor, Get to one side of the map, fight a little bit, move to the other side of the map, and just continue to follow each other and and, and work as a team. I mean, that's basically the, what we're doing here, is that we're just trying to work as a team, do some explosions, and have a lot of fun. I mean, that's all you have to do to really be successful. At the end of the day, like, you don't have to be in a box to play Platinum. You really don't. If you know some people and you just stay together and you come up with some type of synergy, if it's tech, if it's biotic, it doesn't really matter. You can make Platinum really easy that way. So try to keep that in mind. Like, I don't see I don't see enough people actually do that. I would imagine that it's super easy because I always find it really easy. If you stay with your team, you can die like... 10 times like each person can die like 10 times and you probably won't have all that much trouble because if you're together then the second that someone goes down immediately pick them up and you should be okay as long as it's not like a banshee or a phantom standing there getting ready to stab somebody i think you'll be all right so i mean i don't know that's how i feel about playing um platinum is that it was always a lot easier to play platinum if you just stay as a squad and playing maps that allow you to do that makes that a lot easier, like Glacier and Reactor. Bigger maps like Dagger, obviously, that, that map can be a little bit more challenging to stay together, although it is possible. In fact, I think Dagger is actually one of the better maps for staying together. I don't know. So that's just something, that's a general tip there if you know some people to play with. Um, try staying together, because if you have a hard time on Platinum, if you stay with your teammates, you should be fine. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I've been enjoying doing these uh, Platinum gameplays, but I have to be honest with you guys, I've been like thinking about what I want to do for my YouTube channel as of recent. 
Now, I'm going to continue my Let's Play, the Mass Effect Trilogy, and all that. And along the way, I'll definitely be doing some Mass Effect 3. But I was thinking, I really kind of want to start playing Borderlands again. I never actually finished Borderlands. I, I played it for the playthrough. I beat playthrough 1. I never even beat playthrough 2. That was the thing. I never played any of the DLCs. And it wasn't because I got bored of the game or I didn't like the game. It was more or less because I had other things to do. Like... I wanted to start playing uh, Mass Effect again, or I was doing another game. I can't really remember. So that's basically what happened. Now, the thing is this, is that there's a new DLC coming out real soon, and it's going to unlock a playthrough 3, and it's going to increase the level cap for Borderlands 2. So I've decided that I think I want to do that. I think I want to actually start playing Borderlands 2 again and do that DLC. I have like 400 Microsoft points. Which is perfect because that's how much this DLC actually costs. It costs five dollars just to increase the level cap and add in a new difficulty with a playthrough three. I think that's what I'm going to do. So you know, the Mass Effect three um, multiplayer gameplays might slow down a little bit, but like I said, I'll still do them along the way because I will be hopping on Mass Effect quite a bit just to do the Let's Play. So as I'm doing that, I'll also be maybe getting on multiplayer here and there. As, you know, and, and I will also be doing Borderlands. Another game coming out that I'm thinking about picking up, I, it's probably going to take me a while to actually get it, so no matter what, I'm still going to do the Borderlands thing, because I won't be able to get it for like at least two weeks. Can't really afford it right now, but two weeks from now, I'll be able to afford it. Anyway, what that is, is uh, Defiance. That game seems really cool, Like, and a lot of my friends are already talking about it, how they want to buy it. Like DK and Obsidian and Gallo, a lot of people are talking about they want to buy that game. So I think I might pick that game up too. I'm gonna to wait. Like I said, I can't I can't afford it right this second, but I will at least that way be able to talk to some of my friends and ask them like, hey, is this game good? Do you like it? What's going on here? So watch out for that. I might be doing some defiance in the near future. I know that that game is like a third person shooter that has some actual third person shooting mechanics in the game, but it's like a MMO or some crap like that. It sounds really crazy. So I'm really excited about that and it's going to have like these PVPs, like 50 man PVPs. Maybe that's for the PC, I would imagine on Xbox or on console they wouldn't be able to pull that off, but yeah, we'll have to see. So that game looks really cool and sounds really cool, and I definitely want to play that. So let me know what you think about that. If any of you guys have any information about Defiance, please let me know. I, I'm interested. Anyway, uh, but yeah, let me get back on to this. So, you, so the Asari Huntress. I really do think that... Now, would I say she's one of the best infiltrators in the game? Probably not, because there's a lot of great ones, but for what she is, she is really good. Like I said, if you want a player in the sense of Either A, use her as a squad for doing some explosions. She's I highly recommend her. I think that when it comes down to Dark Channel, she's one of the best in the game for having Dark Channel and actually setting it up and staying alive, to playing the objectives because she's an infiltrator, all these things. That's great. So you can do her like that where you can play with a squad and do some explosions. But then again, you can, all, you can also play her with the Warp Rounds 4 to make your gun do an uh, amazing amount of damage and not really worry as much about getting in explosions. And you can also do the incinerary ammo trick where you can do this massive amount of damage over time compared to what you can actually normally do as long as you just warp everything. So that is a couple things you can do. Now one thing I should bring up is how to actually do her explosions by yourself, because it is possible. It's a little bit more complicated, but it is definitely possible. What I like to do with her, if I'm gonna go for an explosion, this is what I, I'll do. I'll see a group of enemies, and I'll dark channel that group of enemies. Then I'll shoot and kill, let's say, uh, the cannibal that I affected with dark channel. When he dies, that dark channel is going to jump to a nearby target. Now, I don't know the radius of that. It might be 10 meters or something. I don't really know. But I know it has some type of radius. Because, like, if you kill, if you dark channel some a group of enemies and then you kill all of them, the dark channel is not going to leap across the map to affect something else on the other side of the map. It ain't going to work like that. You're going to have to reapply it. But if the enemies are still in the general area... What you can do is, you dark channel, like I said, 
the group of the enemies. You kill one, and then you try to locate the target that gets affected. Normally, you can tell because they turn blue, they have the color and all that. If you can find that, basically, all you have to do is actually recloak and throw your warp. And you, you can get an explosion that way. So, yeah, that's not the easiest explosion ever. Because the only other option you have, honestly, is to do, like, a dark channel, and then you sit back, and you wait. And you wait, and you wait, and then you blow them up. Nah, that's not really the way that she's really intended to be played. It's more or less, if you want to play her fast pace and have a lot of fun, it's all about cloak, dark channel, shoot, give it a second, cloak again, warp that target, blow them all up. So that's basically the way that she can do her own explosions. Like I said, it's not the it's not the the quickest thing to do. It's not the easiest thing to do, but it is possible. But if I'm going to play her by myself and I don't have any type of backup, generally I won't go for the explosions unless I can see, like, you know, in, in a certain situation, like, if I'm just playing normally and then I see that, you know, there's a guy here that's set up with Dark Channel or, or the Dark Channel actually leaped over to him, then yeah, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll warp that target just to get the explosion. But, like I said, to me, she's more or less a, a weapons kind of person. So if you use the Warp Rounds 4, Incinerary 4, and all that, it, you're really good to go. And it, it does a lot of damage. And it's amazing. Alright guys, so this is pretty much wrapping up. Like I said, Asari Huntress, really good. I really like her. I love the Claymore on her. You can, you can use a lot of different guns. I personally think the Claymore is the best because it, with the Warp Rounds 4, this gun does an insane amount of damage. It applies the Incinerary effect really easily if you're going to do that. And of course, you can always do that little weight glitch I talked about in another video where you can put the accuracy mod and the high velocity mod on the gun and not really get affected all that much by weight. And she's an infiltrator, so no matter how much weight you actually have on her, as long as you're cloaking and using your power immediately, or if you're cloaking and shooting immediately, then you're good to go. I did not mean to press that button right away. That was a big time mistake. Generally, in the extraction wave on Reactor, I would really recommend holding out on pressing that button until that room gets really full. Not because you want to kill everything, but the reason why you want to wait out is because generally what will happen is that they'll get stuck in there for, I don't know, 5, 10, 5 seconds, something like that, and they won't be able to progress to you anymore. And that's, that's the part I really like because it is important. The extraction way for Platinum, especially for this map, is more or less just survival. Like, that's the way you have to think of it. You don't want to die, you don't want to not get full extraction. You just got to play it smart. And this is one of the easiest maps, I personally think, to actually stay alive for this extraction way. You just simply camp on this side of the map. You wait till about 40 seconds. That's pretty much when I normally like to go. And you'll see us moving now. We're all moving at 40 seconds. I'm turning around and warping and dark channeling still, but, you know, we're still moving. So then, you just simply run your ass to the LZ. Once you get there, maybe fight just a little bit, because you're probably going to have like 15 seconds left or 20 seconds left. Fight a little bit, try to keep them out your LZ, and then back up in the last 5 seconds. And you should be good to go, and full extraction is not, you know, not that hard that way. But Anyway guys, um, I really hope you have enjoyed this. Be sure to go check out my Facebook and give me a like if you ever want to take part in any new polls. Also, make sure to like this video and favorite it for me. I would really appreciate that. And you guys have a nice day.